and welcome to another episode of Coop's Tube. Today I'll be showing you how to shoot an ILS approach into London Heathrow, runway 9 at left. So, firstly, let's come up here and go to location, local map. As you can see, our plane's already on the final approach for London Heathrow. And over here is Heathrow itself. So, what we want to do is it's lined up for runway 9 at left. So, you find the box that has EGLL, which is the code for London Heathrow. Runway 9 left, ILS CAT 1, 110.3. The frequency of 110.3 is what's actually going to guide your plane in. So, going back, what you want to do is you want to come over to the radio section and enter in, first of all click VHFL, uh, if you're on any of the other ones, just make sure you're on VHFL, then you want to put 110.3. And change. So now the frequency is set to 110.3. You can still use air traffic control by pushing the AM button and it's still logged in there. So next you have this button here. As you can see on the display down here, uh, it changes when I um, move it around. Basically, you have NAV1, NAV2, and the flight management system. Flight management system is there, but we won't be using that today. We need uh, NAV1, which is where I've entered the frequency into. So, which is NAV1. Next, what we want to do is hit the localizer and approach button, also known as localizer and glide slope button. Then you want to find a nice speed, so I'm going to go at 160 knots, then hit the thrust button, and we're going to hold 2500 so that we can catch the glide slope. So we can just go up a bit, or whatever, just hold that. Hit the in engage button, that's disengage, we just want the engage. Make sure your flaps are set to 5. Um, for the approach, so mine are currently at free, but when I unpause it, it should extend. Then, as you can see on the flight display, you have a small dot there and a dot there. That is basically the localizer, and that is the uh, glide slope. Basically, the glide slope tells you how high you are and how uh, high you should be, or how low you are and how low you should be. And the localizer tells you whether you need to go left and right. So, let's get going. So, hopefully, if it's all set. Yep, it's all set. We can just push the unpause button and hopefully, yep, it's flying itself. Right, so, the first one. First of all, I've set it to 160 knots, so it's going to descend um, a bit of altitude. And seeing as 160 knots is well in the yellow mark, let's just lower the flaps to 10. That basically means that the yellow mark will actually drive itself down. Uh, the yellow mark means that you may have a stall um, if you go below that. So currently what the plane is doing is it's finding the frequency and the frequency of the radio waves being sent out is guiding the plane in. The way it works is you simply have a, um, uh, it's kind of hard to, to explain, but basically there is a beacon which does the localizer and a beacon that does the glide slope and they emit different types of frequencies. Uh, I will do a tutorial on how the ILS actually works, um, so when it does, when I finally completed it, click the annotation in the top left hand corner. So currently the plane is um, uh, almost perfectly on the glide slope, as you can see just there, it's pretty much fine. Um, it's fine on the localizer, the glide slope does need to climb just slightly, or at least level off a bit. As we are flaring slightly, I might just lower the flaps a bit more. In fact, gear down, seeing as we're near, near the runway, so gear down. And we'll set flaps to 20. As you can see on this display here, you have the flaps and you have the gear. And as soon as I've done that, the um, thrust has automatically come up because we're getting a bit slow as we're causing too much drag. But what that's done is it's now mean that we're not flaring anymore and that we're on a nice approach and the glide slope is at a perfect position, which is good. Right, we're quite close now to the wrong so extend the flaps to 4, which is 30 degrees on the 747. It does vary from plane to plane. through our 
up a full land checklist. Okay, so the full land checklist, landing gear, down. Checked, because it says there, down, gear, and also the lever is down. Flaps set to 30 for landing. Flaps are set for 30 for the landing. If there was a fail, it wouldn't actually move and that wouldn't stay green. So from that, we can see that the flaps are set to 30 and here the flaps are set to 30. So that's good. So that will be our full land checklist complete. Right now we need to lose a bit of speed because 160 knots is way too fast for an 747 to land, although it's possible to just about a minus. So let's slow to 145 knots. as we're coming in and we're pretty much ready to land. Let's slow to 135 knots. Five, as you can see the airspeed indicator is almost exactly the right speed. So we're coming in pretty good. Let's just call up for 500, which means we're 500 feet above the ground, oh, not sea level, because it uses a radio altimeter, which sends out a wave um, that bounces back off the ground, and it can measure the time and then how high you are. When we actually get over the runway, the ILS would have set us up at 50 feet exactly, and when we're at 20 feet, the auto thrust, which is here, will automatically um, disengage itself. That means that we it will now set the thrust to zero when we're at 20 feet, well, at 10 feet rather. And then when you touch down, you can put the reverse thrust in and engage the speed brakes. And then when you're at 60 knots, we're going to pull on the brakes. Not fully, because that would be for an emergency landing, but only halfway. So we're nearly over the fully runway. And we're over it now, and it's just called out 50. 40, 30, 20. Yeah. Auto thrust disengaged, wait for touchdown. Okay, we have touched. Now what we want to do is engage for first thrust. As you can see there, that's the gauge. Now you want to push the speed brakes down. That will cause you more um, downforce. Now and just slowly nudge the front wheel down. At 60 knots, we will disengage for first thrust and engage the brakes. 80 knots. 70 knots. 60 knots disengage, reverse thrust. Engage the brakes down there. And that is pretty much it. So what you do now is when you taxi off, you would disengage the speed brakes and uh, raise the flaps. Thanks for watching CoopsTube, see you next time. Oh, last thing, don't forget to disengage the autopilot.